It is claimed that the weaponry is defensive, but hardly anyone in the opposition believes that. The demonstrations are gaining momentum across Saudi Arabia, where there's a strict ban. And you're back again. I'm Darren Howard. And I'm Robert Nisbet. Thanks for tuning in as we take a look at what mainstream news misses on a regular basis with Radio Free Canada picking... I don't know. I don't know. I want to give the benefit of the doubt the benefit of the doubt but are they willfully missing this stuff i don't know when you talk to the major reporters out there they seem to keep all of the debate confined down to one small easy to manage area life is not like that we have an intellect we're capable of handling things with more than a sound bite okay and we're talking to the intelligent person out there that's why we've got radio free canada but the thing they should have picked up on was last year 2012 was the year of the protest yeah totally and all around the world we saw protests in israel citizens protesting high food and rent people in egypt people in tunisia people in greece high food and rent we've got idle no more high food and rent and we've got people all over south america coming out and protesting against corporate takeovers yeah okay so we've got mining companies and canadian mining companies getting protested we've got monsanto getting kicked out of portugal and india we've got major protests happening and where are they Oh, uh, they're talking about justin bieber and the nhl players strike major news dropping the ball we're picking it up let's run this in case you've been out of touch for the last 18 months Humans all over the world and its major cities have been rising up against economic injustice, government corruption, and for direct democracy. A process where people of a community, city, or perhaps even the world, come together and make decisions by consensus in a public forum, including the voices and viewpoints of all in the interest of the people rather than elite corporations, lobbyists and politicians running a secretive government against the best interest of its citizens. And all over the world they were met with brutal suppression, biased media coverage, and new laws taking away their liberties and attempting to prevent them from organizing further. Some of these civil conflicts brought the fall of regimes and dictators. Larger financially corrupt governments used police brutality and COINTELPRO tactics to split the movement and drive them from the public eye. As the police swept the nation seeking to crush the movement, the media turned a blind eye, and people all but forgot about them. However, direct democracy continued, went underground. Indeed, the revolution has not been televised. Committees and groups gathered in homes, cafes, and halls, drafted voter initiatives, held community barbecues and speakouts, planning legal actions, demonstrations, and flash mobs. Through this massive human interaction, through the sharing of perspective, knowledge, and voice, they saw another world was possible. A world not governed by monopolized power for the profit of a few at the expense of many. A segment of the population began to prepare themselves for that new world. And so that when the chips hit the fan, you would have someone to lean on. And so that those that called them dreamers, radicals, hippies, conspiracy theorists, can have not someone to say, I told you so, but to welcome them to the ways of the new world. Aren't you ready for a new world? I always ask that question. Don't you want a new world? Don't you want to feed hungry people? I know I do. Okay. And they do not want it. You talk about it. Mayor Walter Gray refuses to meet with us. City Hall employees taking the shopping carts away from the homeless. Okay? It's yeah. offensive when you see that government policy, bank policy always ensures poverty that's right because poverty is an industry yes poverty is an industry and remember entitled people refuse to take responsibility we're not those people activism is working on a global scale and we're taking responsibility people are waking up all over the world including in places like bahrain and saudi arabia oh man check this out this is killer bahrain has cut prison sentences for dozens of pro-reform demonstrators that took part in mass rallies last year 
But the move has failed to satisfy human rights groups who are calling on the country to free all jailed activists. The Gulf states been cracking down on anti-regime protesters for nearly two years, killing dozens and arresting thousands. Rights organisations demand the nation stop the use of tear gas and torture interrogations, but campaigners say Bahrain's on a slippery slope to a Sunni dictatorship. When it came to supporting calls for democracy in Middle Eastern and North African states while denouncing government-sponsored violence, leaders of the West were vocally critical. Muammar Gaddafi has lost legitimacy to lead and he must leave. One day, no matter how long it takes, there will be a day of reckoning for this dreadful regime. But when scenes of violent clashes between riot police and reform campaigners came from Bahrain, the definition of democracy shifted and there was a suspiciously muted response. In the summer, the U.S. State Department came up with a statement expressing its concerns over the human rights situation and alleged torture in Bahrain. This was only several months after Washington had restarted weapon sales to this Gulf state. It is claimed that the weaponry is defensive, but hardly anyone in the opposition believes that. Dissenters in Bahrain have been directing anger at their government for months. But now, stop arming the killers is a message they are more often sending out to the West. For decades, Bahrain has been one of Washington's closest allies in the Gulf. Its naval base houses the U.S. 5th Fleet and 6,000 troops, a seemingly irreversible decision made decades ago, despite the growing anti-American mood among some of Bahrain's neighbors. Officials firmly deny that Washington plays a decisive role in preventing any revolution happening in Bahrain. But even the Bahraini government's information minister suggests the U.S. may in fact be playing a double game. If this is true, then Washington's sitting comfortably. It can quickly switch sides if, for instance, Manama refuses to accommodate the American fleet any further. But for now, the opposition in Bahrain is left to wonder as to why calls to support democracy from some are less worthy of attention than others. Alexey Roshevsky, RT, reporting from the Kingdom of Bahrain. And Bahrain, okay, you know, there once again, if if they're an ally and allow our, our military or our corporations to do what they want, they're fine. Well, you can't criticize an emir no. or a king. <laughs> no, no, you can't. Because they're nice people, right? Yes, yes, royalty is always working in your favor, don't you know? But you see the double standard there where they, they support the overthrow of people like Assad and Gaddafi. Yeah. Yet they're mute on these uh, protests going on in places that are allies of the United States. But just remember, it's always countries without a central bank that's controlled by the Rothschilds that gets overthrown. Absolutely. Okay, those are enemies. But remember, if you're a dictator killing your own people, but you're friendly to our corporations, you're fine. Yeah, and the thing, same thing's going on in places like Kuwait, too. They're trying yeah. to overflow, overthrow oh, the Oh, do you want to do this? Family. Well, it's happening in Saudi Arabia, too, and the protests have reached... Oh, this is crazy. Holy Mecca. Okay, let's do it. Holy Mecca. <laughs> on to Saudi Arabia, people have held a new anti-regime protest there. The Wednesday rally took place in the al Qasim region, north of the capital, Riyadh. It was the second day in a row that protesters poured into the streets of the area. Also on Tuesday, demonstrators held a rally in the holy city of Mecca. Anti-regime demonstrations are gaining momentum across Saudi Arabia, where there's a strict ban on any form of protest rallies. The Saudi forces have harshly cracked down on such public gatherings. They've killed at least a dozen demonstrators and arrested many more. Yeah, that's funny. Talking about stuff that falls off of the news editor's desk, eh? Or never even gets there. Like protests in Saudi Arabia? We can't talk about that. We have to buy our oil from them. Yeah, yeah, okay. And that's, a, you know, why are we doing this? Why aren't we switching off of oil? That's a question. Well, you know how the prestitutes and the politicians in the states are. They're suckers for sovereigns. sovereigns. For, oh, yeah. for monarchs. No, no, you can't. Uh, that's right. If I've ever seen any major butt kissing that really offends me, it's the way they butt kiss to royalty or anybody who's a dictator. Well, the really offensive one is the way they butt kiss Israel. They give oh, them more foreign aid yeah. than everybody else combined. The United States gives more foreign military aid to Israel than they do to all of Africa to feed them. The conservatives have cut back on Oxfam. Just check out and do your research on that. Yeah, but they give between 3 and $4 billion a year to Israel in military money. Let's do it. Activism in Israel. About 100 solidarity activists have been able to get into the Gaza Strip through the Rafah crossing on the Egyptian border. 
The majority of the Welcome to Palestine delegation are from European countries, including France, Belgium and Ireland, accompanied by a number of Egyptians. Many of them were delighted for being able to arrive in the besieged coastal strip on the 27th of December. This day coincides with the fourth anniversary of Israel's attack on Gaza in 2008, which claimed the lives of more than 1,400 Palestinians, many of them women and children. The major purpose of the group's visit was to break Israel's illegal blockade imposed on the Gaza Strip. Some of the activists expressed dismay at the support the European countries give to Israel. It's shameful. We're all very, very annoyed with our governments, uh, whether it be the French government, the Irish government, the, the British, German, you know, they're all complicit with, uh, with the Israeli blockade on, on, uh, on Palestine. And, uh, and it's just very, it's very difficult for us living in our respective European countries uh, and seeing all the, the, the aid and all the, the support that they give, you know, these European governments give to, to Israel. The activists were very enthusiastic for being in Gaza. They chanted slogans calling for freedom of Palestine and the boycott of Israel. It's the same enthusiastic spirit that the campaign leader showed while delivering some strong words. We will not stop this fight because this fight is also our fight for the rights of everybody, for justice and for freedom. The Welcome to Palestine campaign will stay in Gaza for five days, conducting visits and solidarity events. The group will also deliver some medical supplies that they brought along. Marking the fourth anniversary of the Israeli operation consulate on Gaza, these activists have come to the Gaza Strip to break the illegal blockade and show solidarity with the Palestinians and their cause. Mazenay Press TV, Gaza. So, of course, Gaza, you know, any negative view of Israel is not carried. Oh, no, because APAC is so strong. Yeah. And they have a very strong lobby here in Canada as well. The UN, though, is really paying attention. World leaders are saying, why do we even have the UN when they make a resolution, Israel ignores it? Well, because Israel is becoming an international pariah. Yeah, it is. Except it, for in the States and Canada. Yes, of course. If you're a conservative, you just... And that's well, it. And the European Union tends to kiss up to Israel, too. It's pathetic, okay? And if you're ever talking about an, absurd, an offensive you know, regime... And what they've done to the Palestinian people is offensive at best. But then again, idle no more. There's Harper doing the same thing to our Aboriginal He's people. He's practicing apartheid the same way the uh, Netanyahu government is practicing apartheid in Israel. It's crazy. Let's run this just to round it out, okay? Oh, Use yeah. your own intelligence. Judge what we have to say. Israel easing restrictions to allow building materials into Gaza. The nation's blockade of the Strip still affects those who live there. One group bearing the brunt of the restriction are farmers, many of whom had to leave their land in the buffer zones to grow food on rooftops. But as Paulus Lear now reports, with a recent assault on Gaza still fresh in the memory, some fear they may not see their next harvest. There's not a lot of greenery in Gaza, at least not in the places you'd expect to find it, like Abu Hatham's farm, which since the Israel-Gaza war four years ago has laid barren and deserted. But rockets from Israel raining down on one of the most densely populated spots on earth meant Abu Hatham needed to find another place where he could grow his crops. And so he looked towards his own home and upwards. It's an idea that's taken root in farms along the Gaza-Israel border, where much of the agriculture has been repeatedly destroyed by the Israeli army. Many farmers are unable to access their land because of the buffer zone that swallows at least a third of Gaza's farmland. Four out of five people in Gaza are dependent on food aid. Homegrown food projects like rooftop gardens can help combat malnutrition and severe poverty by allowing farmers to sell their produce. Farmers grow wheat, barley and a variety of fruits and nuts on these rooftops. They also raise rabbits and chickens, showing how a little ingenuity can go a long way. Ask anyone in Israel or Gaza whether they think the situation is stable and they'll tell you it's only a matter of time before the next Israel-Gaza showdown. There might be a ceasefire in place between the two sides but no one believes it'll hold, least of all the Gaza farmers who are always the first in the line of fire. Paulus Lea RT on the Israel-Gaza border.
Oh, man, we are running short, but we've got another segment coming up. Yeah, we'll be talking about what's going on south of the 49th parallel. I'm Darren Howard. And I'm Robert Nisbet. We're going to be right back, but we want you to get informed about Israel. This is Radio Free Canada.